are your running game, but that's the case with Robert Smith. He's been banged up, sprained ankle, bruised ribs, a slight concussion last week. But the coaches have the utmost confidence in his ability to run inside and out, and he doesn't lack confidence in himself. As a matter of fact, it was reported to me that in the Iowa locker room, there was a quote that Robert Smith made that was printed, and he says he is a better running back than Marshall Falk. He'll have a chance to start proving it this afternoon. On the other side of the ball for Iowa, Matt Ide, number 14, is going to get the start at quarterback, only his second start of his entire career. This young man has great mobility. He can throw the football a good length down the field. He has excellent touch. And the most critical aspect of his game will be the decision-making process. The decisions he makes from behind center will tell the story as to whether or not Iowa is going to have a chance to win this ball game. And the one other thing that the University of Iowa needs to do, and that's do a better job against the rush than they have done defensively so far this year. So stay with us. ABC's coverage of college football will continue from Iowa City. A Big Ten matchup today with bowl implications. The Ohio State Buckeyes taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes. And it is Halloween. Remember, the history of this game is some strange things can happen on all Hallows' Eve. He sees college football. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. On the 25th anniversary diamond. A brilliant celebration of the loving marriage. By Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Buckeyes hold the big lead in the series record the last meeting last year. Of course, Iowa beat Ohio State 16 to 9. And uh, over the last five years, it's been pretty even. 2-2-1 two, two, and one between these two schools. John Cooper, the head coach of Ohio State in his fifth year. And of course, Hayden Fry in his 14th. There's John. And he's been on the endangered species list at Ohio State. John says he's not concerned about it. He never thinks about it. He says he believes, when I talked to him yesterday, that he'll be back here next year. And so he doesn't waste any of his time talking to the players about it or worrying about it. Ohio State won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half. And so Iowa will get the football. Number one, Willie Guy has dropped back deep for the Hawkeyes. Along with number 83, Harold Jasper, the guy that they would like to get the ball to. Jasper, to the left of your screen. As he and Guy are inside the five. And Tim Williams, a junior out of Waynesville, Ohio, at 5'9 and 180, will do the kicking off for Ohio State. Full house on hand. And Williams hits it over into the far corner, and Jasper has it at the... At the 23. Knocked down by 84, Craig Powell. One of the Buckeye linebackers. And here's Matt Ive. He is a junior, but this is only his second start in college. Of course, Jim Hartlieb had been playing quarterback. And Hartlieb out with an injury, and there was some talk that he may be available, but I think more than likely it would be next week rather than this week. So Matt Ide getting his second start. He's 6'4 and 2'10, and he did transfer from Michigan State. He is out of East Lansing, Michigan. Marvin Lampkin, 33, and Lou Montgomery, 34, the backs Lampkin on first down. Nowhere to run as he is covered immediately by Steve Tovar, the Buckeyes' number one leading tackler and the middle linebacker. The diehard starting lineups for the Iowa offense with Lampkin and Montgomery in the backfield. Dane and Hughes, their big play guy, along with Jasper at wide receiver. And the tight end, who will be standing up a lot, a la Hayden Fry, is Cross. Davis, Belser, Devlin, a good center. Peroni and Reese, who was injured, but is back. The big front five. Second down, 10. Ike's first pass attempt. Plenty of time. Tipped at the last minute. 
tipped by Roger Harper, the strong safety, number 24, or Allen Cross, the tight end, might have been all the way. The diehard starting lineups for the Iowa State defense with Foster Wilkinson, who was shaken up badly last week, but is back. Smith and Simmons, the front down four. Williams, Tovar, and Powell, the linebackers. Cook, Kerner, Harper, and Nelson. The secondary for the Buckeyes. Their defense has been very good. Third down, 10. Again, good protection for Ives, who now runs out of the pocket. Still looking. And he's got Montgomery over here. Montgomery can't make the catch at the 35, and a penalty flag goes down. Montgomery was open forever, Lynn. And there were a couple of receivers downfield open, but Matt Ives just didn't eye them, didn't <laughs> see them downfield. But you had a good chance to see well, I talked about earlier his mobility as he scrambled around in that backfield and gave himself the time to get it, to find an open receiver. Let's we'll see what the penalty is. An ineligible receiver downfield, Jerry Hendrickson, the referee, signaling. And when guys run around that long behind the line of scrimmage, usually somebody gets in front of the line of scrimmage. Of course, and Matt Ide put the ball downfield. Montgomery had a chance for it, but the ball was very, very low. Well, a loss of down will bring up a punting situation. And Scott Fisher comes on to do the punting. The senior takes the high snap. And he booms it out of there. Sending Walter Taylor way back and Bobby Diaco, who is the kamikaze on kick coverage, down there in one big hurry. A 50-yard punt. It was a high snap, and he just kicked it very quick. It was a line drive driving him all the way back, and in most cases, you get a line drive, you outkick the coverage. Nobody gets there in time, but Bobby Diaco has been a man who has been absolutely marvelous for the Hawkeyes on special teams was down there in a hurry. It makes a great tackle. So Ohio State has it first and 10 at their own 31. No score in the first quarter. Brian State line going in motion. Herb Street gives it to the fullback, Jeff Cochran. And Cochran hit immediately by Tyrone Goudreau, number 37. And Iowa fired up. Boudreau in there at linebacker did a terrific job of just shooting the gap there and making the stop. Kirk Herbstreet, the quarterback, a senior out of Centerville, Ohio, 6'2 and 2'10. You see his career numbers. He's in a 61% passer this year. Second down, 10. Fake to Robert Smith. Bergstein's first pass completes the Cochran, but he's hit immediately by Carlos James. Here's the diehard starting lineup for Ohio State. Robert Smith getting the start at tailback, Cochran the fullback. DeGraff and Reed and State line the wide receivers, and Cedric Saunders the tight end. Up front, it's Winrow back in the starting role. Hartman a good one. Long, Mono, and Springer. Springer, a 300-pound freshman. And a very talented game man with great maturity. It is a game of three, so it's third and seven. The ball at the Ohio State, 34. From the shotgun, Herb Street over the middle, complete to State Line, who has the first down. State Line to the OSU 49 in the grasp of number six, Scott Plate. Well, that time, Ohio State is taking advantage of deep zone coverage. They get Stabline running an out pattern underneath the receiver on the far side. That receiver on the, on the way out, on the, on the outside, drives his man up the field, creating the open gap. Those are the big guys along the front line for the Iowa defense. Blue, Nelson, Crane, and Wells. First and 10, Ohio State just shy of midfield. Robert Smith's first carry bounces outside. First down. 
And Jason Olensack bumps it out of bounds, but it's a first down deep in Iowa territory. Olensack, the strong safety, the last guy that could get Robert Smith. I will tell you that the Iowa defensive players are none too happy about the comments made by Robert James. I'm talking about his ability and by Kirk Herbstreit. When after the game, their win against Michigan State last week, Herb Street said that they were going to march into Iowa and just win that football game as if it would be no contest. Little uh, bulletin board fodder for yes. the Iowa locker room. A 25-yard game for Robert Smith and a first down Ohio State at the Iowa 25. Cochran for a couple down to about the 23. Let's go to John Saunders for an update. Steve, Michigan and Purdue with a thriller down to the end. Eric Hunter with a last-ditch attempt. This is after he was sacked for a big loss. Tosses it up for grabs. Pat Maloney on the ricochet picks it off, and Michigan holds on for a 24-17 win. Steve. Thank you, John. I'll tell you what, Michigan got a scare for one of the few times this season as they trailed at halftime. Purdue gave him quite a game. Second down and about eight yards to go. And it's complete to Sanders, Chris Sanders, close to a first down as he's driven out of bounds at the 15. Carlos James on the stop. The linebackers for the Hawkeyes, Daly Hartley, brother of the quarterback, and Matt Hilliard. And the secondary, James Plate, Olin Zach, who happens to be their leading tackler, and Doug Book. You would prefer not to have any of your safeties be the leading tacklers in your team. And for the Iowa defensive unit, the top five tacklers, two of them are in the secondary. That's right. On first down, Robert Smith banging for a few down near the 12 before he's cut down. Somebody lost a shoe. Mike Wells and Hartley on the stop. And talking about Robert Smith, coaching staff, as I said early on, are very confident and very high in his talent and ability. They believe that of all the backs you have in the backfield, Harris and Benote, he's got the ability to take a short run and possibly make it into the home run, the big play. So that's why he's in there. And he already has a 25-yarder. There's Hayden Fry, who's in his 31st year as a college head football coach. Butler Benote, number 33, averaging five yards a pop in a tailback. But it's a play-action fake, and Herb Street's looking for somebody. Now he's going to run. Skips out of bounds at the six. Herb Street, about a yard short of the first down. Chased by 93, Jeff Nelson. And finally, picking up a few. I'll tell you, this was a great play by the defensive unit of Iowa. Number five, Carlos James, is, is kind of under pressure because he's got a receiver coming into his territory. Now, he thinks about coming up when Herb Street begins to run, but the number 37, Tyrone Bodro, comes across. So he saw he had someone making a play, forcing the quarterback out. He stayed with the receiver. That play in tandem prevented a touchdown. Iowa's defense, however, will need to play together here. It is third down and one. Herb Street gives on the inside handoff. And it's going to be very close. I think Cochran got it as he, he needed to get near the four. It will depend on where they spot the ball. Nope, they're going to mark it right on the five. So Cochran's going to be short. And the guy spotting that ball must be an old-time accountant. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, err on the side of conservatism. I mean, account for every penny. Well, it's going to bring up fourth and one. They're asking for a measurement, I believe. Yep. Herb Street asking referee Jerry Hendrickson to measure. He wants to know exactly how much he needs to get. And he has the right to ask. Absolutely. It's a smart move just in case that marker is a little bit off. Gives his offense time, a offense unit a chance to just regroup just a bit. Let the coaching staff think about what play they really want to put in there and execute it. It looks like they have about 18 inches to go. If they decide to go for it. John Cooper has won 32 games and lost 20 at Ohio State. But that's not good enough for a team that has so many great years of Rose Bowl under Woody Hayes. 
on fourth down and about a foot and a half. Cotton again has the first down as he gets to the three. It'll be first and goal, Buckeyes. Unfortunate for the Hawkeyes on that play, the defensive unit started to charge a little bit too soon and one of the players was trying to get, get off on the snap, slipped and couldn't get back in time. Get, couldn't get on his feet in time. I walked out into the field, it's real soft feet. Really? They haven't had a lot of rain here, but the field is extraordinarily soft, so if you see someone trying to cut on the dive and their feet slipping away from them, you'll know why. Well, it has been dry. It's cold and windy. But there hasn't been any moisture of late. Pitch back to Robert Smith. Touchdown! Robert Smith with that long stride. He's a track man, and he took that one in almost untouched. And Ohio State jumps out in front. Well, the Ohio State Buckeyes offensive line gets a jump on this play. You look at them driving the black jerseys back. Opens up a slender hole for a slender halfback. <laughs> Robert Smith, 6'2", 195. He's a sophomore out of Euclid, Ohio. And now Tim Williams will come on to attempt the extra point. Williams has been perfect, making 18 in 18 attempts this year and make it 19. Nine minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Ohio State on their initial possession drives to take a seven to nothing lead. Robert Smith scoring on a three yard run. Eleven play, 69 yard drive. And on the play, Robert, or on the drive rather, Robert Smith carried four times for 31 yards, including the three yard touchdown run. And Ohio State out to a seven to nothing lead. Again, it's Willie Guy number one, and number 83, Harold Jasper, back. As was the case when the ball game started. Tim Williams will do the kicking off. Well, so far in their first possession, Ohio State did exactly what they wanted to do and what they said they were going to do. Move the ball down the field, mixing the pass and run. Very controlled drive. begun to fall as Jasper takes it at about the nine. Go hole! Just tripped up by Tim Walton, a defensive back. Let's go to John Saunders again for an update. Steve Stanford in Washington and the Cardinals strike first. Steve Stenstrom looks for Justin Armour who finds his way into the open and then into the end zone. Wide open. Stanford. The Cardinal up 7 nothing in the first quarter, Steve. Thank you, John. Well, Stanford, the Cardinals are going to give the Huskies all they want today, apparently. 30-yard kickoff returned by Jasper, and Iowa has good field position at their own 38. That eye play action. The protection. Incomplete intended for Marvin Lampkin out of the backfield in the past one hopped him there. Steve Tovar was right over there, number 58, the middle linebacker. Excellent coverage on the play. And as always, we'll be bringing you up to date all afternoon on scores both in progress and games that are completed. A&M supposed to win big, and there's that big uh, world's largest outdoor cocktail party, the Florida-Georgia game going on out in Jacksonville. <laughs> they take, take a little time off the golf courses to watch that one, huh? That's right. Second down, 10. Montgomery and Lampkin in the backfield in the eye formation. Play action again. Eyed has time, but nobody open, and now he falls down. Losing ground back to the 28. Well, credit Jason Simmons, number 91, for coming in, but while they're regrouping for the next play, take a look at the checklist for Iowa. They want to be efficient because they believe that Ohio State will only limit them to will limit them to about 10 possessions, so they want to use them as much as possible. But the most important thing for the Iowa checklist is the last one. For the defense, get off the blocks and improve their tackling. They get held up a lot when they're on defense trying to rush in, taking on the blockers, and they're not shedding those blockers and making the tackle. So that's something they have to improve on today. Well, they had a 69-yard drive against them on Ohio State's first possession. Loss of 10 as Ryde went down. So it's 
20 to go on third down. Screen pass to Montgomery. And Montgomery up to the 34, and that is all. Marlon Kerner up from the secondary, number 46, to make the stop on the fullback. And Iowa will have to punt it away. And Iowa scrambling onto the field. They've got their punt team on there in a hurry. Their offensive unit better hurry off the field. <laughs> Walter Taylor, number two, dropping back. And a punch kick by Scott Fisher, a line drive that Taylor's going to let roll. Inside the 25, it'll be down to the 24. 7.37 remaining in the first quarter. The Buckeyes leading the Hawkeyes 7 to nothing. The last time that Ohio State visited Iowa two years ago, the 1990 game came down to the last play with seven seconds left. And down 26-21, Greg Fry to Bobby Olive to give the Buckeyes the victory 27-26. Now Ohio State leads it 7 to nothing, and they have a first and 10 in a cold rain at their own 24. Third Street to Robert Smith. And Robert Smith, not much running room, but a penalty flag goes into the pile as he's dragged down at the 25 by Matt Hilliard, number 48. And let's pause five seconds to allow our local ABC stations to identify themselves. So the lesser of the two penalties, the five-yard variety, will move the ball out to the 30. It'll be first and five. Ohio State on the move for the second time. Their first possession, a 69-yard drive, resulting in their 7-0 lead. Herb Street, three of three passing so far. Robert Smith. Breaking a tackle, has a first down, and out across the 40 to the 43. Dropped by Doug Book, the free safety. That time, Paul Long, the center, Dave Mono, number 77, the right guard, did a great job of opening up a hole. So that Smith could just glide through. That's big Mr. Mono. Mono started the season off at about 275. Long 282 and Stringer, as you document, over 300 pounds. Who knows where the weight is now, up or down from that number, depending <laughs> on how much work they've been doing each week. Gain of 12. The ball at the Ohio State 42. Herb Street on a bootleg. Hartley slips. And it's complete to Chris Sanders at the Iowa 40, hit immediately by Doug Book. But a big play for Ohio State as Herb Street did a great job of getting away and then finding an open receiver. Terrific look from the end zone to watch 42 from the right. That's Hartley. He has a chance, but Herb Street makes a miss. Now he's scrambling, good mobility. He's going to find Sanders downfield. And when Book makes a stop, he is the only man between Sanders and the end zone. That was an 18-yard gain. The ball right at the Iowa 40, first and 10. Give credit to Herb Street's happy feet. Yeah. And that rain is making the field even more slippery now. Robert Smith breaks one tackle, but not Hilliard. Matt Hilliard, number 48, driving Robert Smith back. Hilliard, a 230-pound junior from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Perfect example of what I'm talking about in terms of uh, Iowa defense making better tackle. Number 64, Mike Wells, who is a terrific player for him, comes in this game with 52 tackles and three sacks. All right, he has a chance to make the stop. You see 64 on the watch him. He gets off the block. He should make that tackle. Instead, he misses. That should be a tackle for a loss right there. He misses it, his opportunity, and Matt Hilliard, fortunately, was coming up on the play. No gain on the play, so it's second down, 10. complete. Alan DeGraffenreid. DeGraffenreid doing a good job after he catches the ball, getting it down near the 26. And DeGraffenreid getting his first start last week. Coming in and starting the game for Sanders. DeGraffenreid, senior, good steady player, 
Excellent hand. Here he makes a good catch on the inside. <laughs> and his balance is the best thing after he makes a catch. Looks like a matador shedding a block. Lost his towel there. Buddy picked up 12 yards in the first down. The ball now at the Iowa 27. And Ohio State driving once again. The blitz is picked up and Robert Smith has a big hole. Across the 20. In the grasp of Scott Plate, number six. Monday night here on ABC, NFL Monday Night Football, the Vikings and the Chicago Bears, a classic NFC Central matchup. A little black and blue action for you. That's at 9 Eastern. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football here on ABC. Dennis Green going against Mike Ditka. There's Hayden Fry. Trying to find a way for his defense to stop Ohio State and contact made along the line of scrimmage. Maria Crane, number 88, I believe, was a man that jumped early, made contact with the center, Paul Long. Defense, five yards, first down. Maria Crane, the nose guard, a junior out of Waco, Texas. If you jump in there and then you don't make contact and you get back and get set, you're okay. But Unless you're working up against a smart center. Who will snap the ball. Who will snap that ball while you're in the neutral zone. That's right. But contact they made get, there. They should have a stat for five-year game for center snapping the ball. <laughs> yeah, just, just what we need, another stat. <laughs> First and ten. Inside the Iowa 15. Robert Smith again. Cutting it back and getting down to the 11. The tackle made by... Hilliard. But a gain of about four yards on first down. Hayden Fry has a great sense of humor, and this season here at Iowa has really tested that sense of humor. And chatting with him yesterday, he came out with some classic one-liners, but I think, Swanee, you can tell there's some strain telling. After the great season they had last year, the injuries and the youth have combined to really... Caused him a great deal of problems this season. Second down, six. Robert Smith again. And a good play by Plate. Scott Plate coming up quickly from his cornerback position. That's real heads up play by the corner. You, know, you, want, a, you want a corner who can come up when he's playing in short zone, forced to play. He gets away from Stabline, who's supposed to block him. Sees it's a run all the way and gets in for a good low tackle on Smith. Smith did pick up three, so it'll be third and three. The ball just outside the seven. John Cooper. In his 16th year as a head coach. Coach, of course, at Tulsa and Arizona State before Ohio State. The rain coming down even harder. Robert Smith running for the corner. Touchdown. Jeff Cochran, the fullback, throwing a great block, and Robert Smith dancing in for his second score of the game. Robert Smith should give three of these points. Number eight, Jeff Cochran. Now watch Cochran, who's at fullback. Watch him lead out on number five. Now he has to clear the way. Number five comes up. That's Carlos James, and he just hits him, spins him around, and the rest of the field is clear. Tim Williams on to attempt the extra point. And Ohio State scoring on their first two possessions. And Williams now 20 of 20 extra points this year. And with 2.26 remaining in the first quarter, the Buckeyes behind 66 yards rushing by Robert Smith and two touchdowns lead at 14 to nothing. Think about taking that helmet going out on the field there. Looks like he could do some head knocking and never get hurt. Not too bad for the rain either. Unless someone's got a little pin and lets the air out of his head. Help it. <laughs> Airhead? No comment. Air helmet. Air helmet. Again, it's Jasper, the number one Willie Guy back, uh, Tim Williams, who's been busy. This will be his third kickoff, and he's kicked two extra points. And we have about two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. A 76-yard drive following a 69-yard drive on Ohio State's first possession. Robert Smith scoring both touchdowns. 
The rain continues to fall as Jasper takes it from the eight. And a good play by 28, Jason Lewis, the backup safety, coming across to make the tackle on Harold Jasper. And a reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 22nd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Matt Ide and company need to get a drive going. Ohio State has scored their first two possessions. Ryan Terry, number 32, is in a tailback. Lou Montgomery, the fullback, and Ide to throw on first down. Again, he has protection, but again, nobody open, and now he dumps it off to no one. Montgomery was over there in the vicinity. The ball actually landed closer to an offensive lineman, Bob Reese. But Big Daddy, Dan Wilkinson, number 72, had a hold of Ide's jersey. And the official was pointing towards Montgomery the whole time. 72, Big Daddy, Dan Wilkinson. I'm telling you, he is a man to be uh, reckoned with. <laughs> 299 they listed, maybe over 300. Why do they do that? But he's got a great vertical jump, excellent speed. 299, I think that's 300 pounds any way you look at it. That's it. Hyde has completed just one of five passes. Ryan Terry picking his way and fumbling the football. Still loose. And it's a big game for Iowa. They fumbled it forward far enough to where Mike Ferroni, 55, fell on it. And it'll be a first down at midfield, a 26-yard fumble forward game. Ferroni at 6'2 and 280, chasing it down. And in, and in case you were wondering about the speed of the offensive line, Ferroni shows you just how fast they are. Here's the play, and it's the story of Ryan Terry. He is always having problems holding on to the football. Everybody's trying to grab it. They just keep knocking it forward, and you would not expect the offensive lineman to be that far downfield making the play, but Ferroni is a hustler. Well, it's Halloween. We ought to have some ghost yardage, right? Yeah. Play action on first down. I completing it to Montgomery. Montgomery down to the 26th of Ohio State. Roger Harper, the strong safety, made the stop. There are two ways to attack the Ohio State defensive coverage, and they play a majority of two deep and five people underneath in the coverage. Sometimes that coverage underneath is man, sometimes it's zone. You can either go vertical, find the lanes, the alleys straight down the field, or you can find the crossing patterns underneath the different levels of coverage. So far, Iowa's been trying to attack it on a vertical basis. That was a 24-yard gain on the completion to the fullback Montgomery. First and 10 at the Ohio State 26. Now Montgomery carries. Down to about the 22. Chico Nelson, the free safety number 13, coming up to make the first hit. Gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. Final minute of the first quarter. Montgomery averaging over four yards a pop this season. Now three wide receivers. There's a backup tight end, Matt Whitaker. And Dane and Hughes are split to the right, Jasper to the left. But it's a running play to Montgomery. And Lou, as you can hear the crowd call out, gets short yardage down near the 20. Chico Nelson again making the stop. Well, they tried to come up with a running play. That was a quick hitting play, a bit of a counter. As I was moving to his right with the back coming across to the left. But Ohio State was in a man-to-man -man coverage in terms of the secondary, which meant they had more people up on that offensive line to block the run. Third down and four. Final seconds of the first quarter. We'll see if they... No, nope, they're not going to get it off before the quarter ends. The end of the first quarter in Iowa City. Iowa driving, but Ohio State leading 14 to nothing. On the sidelines and trying to stay dry, along with 70,000 others. Here are the first quarter statistics. And nothing out of the ordinary from watching this first quarter of action. Ohio State controlling the football. Time on the clock and tempo of the game. Third and about five. Big play for Iowa on this drive. Penalty flag and whistles. Stop play upon the snap. 
So we'll see what Jerry Hendrickson and his crew come up with. Dead ball, false start, offense, third down. Well, that's a killer when you got third and five and all of a sudden it's third and ten. A third and five, you have a little bit of room to play with, although they consider third and five a long situation where most teams are likely to pass. Now you really got to put the ball in the air and come up with a big play, third and ten. Ohio State leading 14 to nothing. And we will again start the second quarter. Tied with time. And a fine running catch by Jasper. Jasper inside the 15. And a first down. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Steve Stanford in Washington, and this is a long, long three-yard touchdown pass. Brunel is chase almost back to his 25, but Lake Johnson, who's then wide open in the end zone, three yards it covers, 7-7. Seven, seven. Steve. Thank you, John. Heck of a game, and let's look at the catch. A heck of a catch by Harold Jasper. And he's beating Tim Walton, man who was out the last couple of weeks with a concussion, back in playing the ball game this afternoon. 12-yard gain, first down, Ryan Perry out of the backfield for a short gain, if any. He was hit immediately by Craig Powell, number 84, who is the Ohio State version of Iowa's Bobby Diaco. He's the kamikaze guy for the Buckeyes. He just loves to hit. He plays all out, uses his speed and quickness. Gain of just one. So it'll be second and nine, Iowa. A big, big third down and ten. They came up with the... 12-yard reception to Jasper. Ohio State not liking to play a lot of man coverage. They choose to play two, two deep zones a lot. Here, the, I don't think you're going to see him use that because they're backed up in their own end zone. So you see man coverage. Montgomery with a quick hitter up the middle. Fumble! And Iowa gets it at the one-yard line. Jasper, number 83, man who came up with a big catch right around that football. So far, he's my MVP choice. I'll tell you. Full of Hawkeye. You see Montgomery carrying it upfield. He's a tough runner, but he loses it. And there's Jasper. And wisely, he just jumps on top of that ball and protects it. Doesn't try and play around with it. Just uses his hands to pick it up. Well, some more ghost yards on Halloween. A gain of 11. It was Craig Powell who hit Montgomery and caused the fumble. Harold may caught. <laughs> this Ohio State Buckeye defense as he continues at this pace. First and goal from the one. Lampkin, touchdown! Well, with the rain came a few miscues. And with those dual mistakes came some big opportunities for Iowa. They take advantage of it, and Lampkin is the beneficiary of that short run for a touchdown. Todd Romano will attempt the extra point. And it is good. Romano, 4 of 4 now. An extra point attempt, but there is a penalty marker down on the field. It is, however, against... Ohio State. So I do believe that will be assessed on the kickoff. Mike Devlin, the captain for the Hawkeyes, getting the option from Jerry Hendrickson. And I think Height, you Offside. saw him say kickoff. Defense, the point count to penalize on the kickoff. So we have 13 17 remaining in the second quarter. Iowa on the board with a little help from some ghost yardage and a couple of fumble recoveries. A 75-yard drive for the Iowa Hawkeye, Hawkeyes to get on the board is 14-7 Ohio State. Of the 75 yards, 37 were accomplished on those two fumbles forward that Iowa opportunistically was able to get. But they're back in the game. Robert Smith and Butler Bonote 
back to receive the kick of Todd Romano. We were talking about how dry it had been here in this part of the country, and all of a sudden... Yeah, I walked down to the field, and I saw it, it seemed to be very wet, and I asked him about the field. He said, well, we haven't had any rain, but just believes the field is very soft, and then here today, it begins to come down. Very lightly, however. Bonate, out of St. Louis, across the 20 to about the 23 or 4. And let's go down on the sidelines and introduce you to Mark Jones who's with us today. Mark. All right, guys, I'm joined by Tom Arnold, a former Iowa student. Things not going yeah. too well right now, Tom, but... No. Uh, well, they're better than they were. We're, we just scored. <laughs> That's a good thing. Tell me about your new show coming up, the new project. Yeah, well, it's called The Jackie Thomas Show, and it starts airing on ABC uh, December 1st. It airs after the Roseanne Show, coincidentally. And it's, I play the star of the show, a guy named Jackie Thomas, who's the star of a sitcom. He fires a lot of people. Has a lot of trouble. I don't know where we got the idea. <laughs> Maybe a role for a sideline reporter, he tells me, guys. Back upstairs to you. Thanks, Mark. Hey, did yeah. Tom play football here? I, I don't know, but I, I like his line about they don't know where they got the idea. Robert Smith with a big hole. Running to the short side of the field. He gets across the 30, up to about the 32, run out of bounds by Bobby Diaco. I, I'd like to ask him how he got the time spot after Roseanne. <laughs> yeah. The connection there? Anything? I, yeah. I, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you never know. You never know. Here's a good look at Robert Smith. Smith, a sophomore at 6'2", 195, and has had a number of injuries, including an ankle, a concussion last week as he went into the bench. But he got him off to a good start with a 26-yard run, and uh, seems to have gotten Ohio State on a fast track in this ballgame. He picked up seven, second down three. Hold back, Cotron cutting back. First down, breaks the tackle. And Doug Book goes for a ride, but finally brings him down. If Doug Book were any lighter, he'd be a flag oh, on the back of Cothran as he just chugged down that field. Cothran has got great speed for a fullback, 6'2", 235. Just a quick hitting play up the middle of the line. Credit that offensive line for blowing open the hole. But look at Cothran. He just puts his head down, takes another guy. And watch Book. He's going 5'10". 15 yards, he had contact with him before they brought him down. Jason Olenzak, number 13, came over to finish him off. He'd already run over Scott Plate, who weighs almost 200 pounds. Before this possession began for Ohio State, they had two previous possessions in which they scored. They were averaging 7.4 yards per play. The Hawkeye defense came into this game averaging, in terms of giving up to their offense, 6.1 yards per play. And any offensive coach will tell you, if you can gain four yards of play, they consider it a win. And you're probably going to drive right down the field. So, do you know the, the Hawkeye defense was up against you just coming into this ball game? They really need to gamble a little bit more to stop Ohio State. Ohio State has not been stopped. They have scored on each possession. They're driving again with Robert Smith taking it inside the 25 in the grasp of Matt Hilliard. Scores in the well, that Purdue Michigan game, a scare for the Wolverines. That that score, that is, score wrong. is incorrect. 24 7. Michigan did come back and win that game. They were trailing at halftime. They did come back and beat Purdue. They remain unbeaten in the Big Ten, unbeaten overall, although they do have one time. Robert Smith now has 78 yards, and we have 12 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Cochran again, again a big hole. First down as he bangs inside the 15. Again, Doug Book, who's getting well acquainted with Mr. Cochran, and Matt Hilliard, number 48, bring him down. So I he's a load. I will tell you, number 67, Alan Klein, the right tackle for the Ohio State Buckeyes, did a great job of just blowing open the hole before Book ever had a chance to come up and make the play. And there's the correct score, that Michigan-Purdue football game. Purdue gave them all they could handle early on, holding the lead much, most of the game. First down, Ohio State. Robert Smith, again, a big hole. Inside the five, diving down to the two. 
And again, it was Doug Book over there to keep him out of the end zone. And William Houston, number 42 for Ohio State, made a fine block to help spring Robert Smith for a 12-yard gain. You're up against it when the execution is sound across the board. Everybody did their job perfectly. Look at the lead block he gets here, right there. Smith reads it well, cuts inside, gets another block by Stabline to the outside, takes advantage of it, goes up and over, and that's as much as you could have expected to get out of that play, and they got it. And they also got a first and goal at about the two and a half. Cochran, straight ahead, touchdown. Jeff Cochran, who's had a big role in this drive, puts it in the end zone for Ohio State, and the Buckeyes have scored on drives each time they've had a possession so far in the game. Oh, and that's scary. That is scary when you're a defensive unit trying to find a way to halt this machine that seems to be well-oiled and finely tuned. The execution on each drive has been impeccable, been outstanding. Offensive lines just been driving the Hawkeyes off the line of scrimmage. Tim Williams to attempt the extra point. Joel Kessel, the punter, will do the holding. And he hooks it inside the upright for, to remain perfect. 11 and a half minutes remain in the second quarter. Ohio State appears unstoppable so far. Welcome back to Iowa City. That headless holder is Joel Kessel on the extra point. Watch this. It's an orange thrown in the stands, but does that stop Tim Williams? No. There's the snap, the hold, and the kick, and it's good. If he had missed that, they would have had to have given him another opportunity to kick that extra point. I'll tell you, it's great concentration by Kessel because that ball hit him right in the arm, or I that orange. I should say. I am telling you, not just the horses running in the Breeders' Cup that they have blinders. <laughs> <laughs> so another 75-yard drive for Ohio State, and this one only took a minute 43. about the 19 and he hits a stone wall there where Iowa will have an opportunity to get it going. Stopped by Alex Rodriguez, the backup linebacker at 6'1 and 230 out of Chicago. Let's go down to Mark Jones who has another guest. Mark. All right, guys, I'm with Jonathan Hayes of the Kansas City Chiefs, former Iowa football player, uh, all-conference tight end. Jonathan, uh, do you have a favorite memory of this series with Ohio State? Not a not a good one, and maybe a bad one. We're up in Ohio State, stuck through a pick, and all I remember is getting blasted over a pile, and the kid jumped in for a touchdown. But that's the the worst memory I had against Ohio State. But we've got after him. It's, it's early in the game yet. They'll get, they'll get it back. They'll be fine. Jonathan, guys, thinking of slipping on a uniform. Back up there to you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they could use him. They threw it out of the backfield to Marvin Lampkin, who picked up short yardage on first down. Brian Cook drove him out of bounds. Let me tell you at this point what I think is happening with Matt Ide. He's getting the time he needs to, to move the ball down the field, but I don't think he's seeing and recognizing the coverages and then being able to pick out those receivers downfield. Because every time he's been back and he's been looking, even though he's been scrambling, he's had two and three receivers pop open for him. So his vision has to get better. His vision has to get better downfield on the pass play. The other thing is that Iowa needs to move the football on the ground to help open it up a little more. That's intended for Lou Montgomery, the fullback, but thrown too tall and incomplete. So it'll be third and six. Run down the top 20 for you. Miami will be taking on West Virginia tonight, and there's the Huskies coming back against the Cardinal after Stanford took a 7 to nothing lead. There's the Michigan-Purdue score as Purdue led by 10 at halftime. Iowa at their own 23. Third down. Hyde has time again over the middle. Incomplete intended for Damon Hughes. Roger Harper, the strong safety, was really the closest player to it. Number 24 for Ohio State. Very interesting on that third long situation. 
They chose to keep their tight end in and only work two receivers on one side of the field, giving him just half the field he had to look at to make a play, to make a decision. Scott Fisher back around the six-yard line. And the man who came in, number 28, Jason Lewis, the man who came in and blocked, I shouldn't say blocked, he never got a chance to punt the ball, made the stop. One of the reasons I think they were in a hurry to punt the football in this particular foot game is because Ohio State comes in with a guy, number nine, Tito Paul, who has blocked two punts, but look at number 28 just cut in there. They're all in great position to make the stop there, but it's Jason Lewis, redshirt freshman, who'll get the credit. Lewis out of Atlanta, Maryland, and was in there in one quick hurry. Talk about field position inside the 10-yard line for Ohio State. Well, they've driven 69, 75, and 79 yards, 75 yards twice. Now they're inside the 10, and Ohio State asked for a timeout. 11.07 left to go in the second quarter. Herb Street conferring with the coaches, John Cooper in the red cap there. And a reminder, next Saturday here on ABC, key conference matchups will make up our regional action. The SEC, the Crimson Tide of Alabama takes on LSU. Many of you will see a Big Ten showdown. Others will catch an important Pac-10 or Southwest Conference game. And in the WAC, Marshall Falk, the Grand Marshal, leads San Diego State into Wyoming. Check for the game in your area on your local ABC station. And remember, the other game may be available pay-per-view. Check with your local cable operator. Well, I'll tell you, as Ohio State is getting ready to take this fourth possession, we had a checklist for Ohio State coming into this game. And one of the things in it said, run well. I think, <laughs> I think they're doing that easily. Yeah. They've been running better than the candidates. <laughs> Well, certainly they've opened up a wider gap between them and <laughs> between their opponents. They didn't want to give up the big plays. They wanted to create turnovers, control the game, run well, and they wanted Kirk Street to stay in the pocket and pass, and he's been able to do all of those things this afternoon. Now they have a first and goal from the nine. Robert Smith has been packing the load. Picking his way for a couple down to the seven in the grasp of Brent Bielema and Jason Olenzak. Bielema, number 91, a 265-pound freshman. Our senior, I should say. And big Brent. But look at the difference in the rushing yardage. Ohio State pounding on the ground in Iowa, unable to get anything going offensively on the ground themselves. They've been running the ball so well, they'll probably stay on the ground, but it'll be a perfect opportunity to run a little play action right here. Second and goal from the seventh. Herb Street appears to be changing the play. Dropping back quickly, and he's sacked back at the 15 by Tyrone Boudreau. Sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Wasted no time coming from that linebacking position on the blitz. The Sandy Hawkeye defense has to gamble a little bit to try and make some things happen. They guessed right. The Ohio State would try and put the ball in the air. He shoots the gap straight up the middle. And Herb Street was down. A loss of seven on the play. Moves the ball back to the 14 where it is third and goal. Nowhere to run. Matt Hilliard, 48, leading the charge for the Iowa defense. Now that's tactical football. Tactical football with the Hawkeye defense in a bad situation. Made the right calls with the defense, gambled at the right time, came across the line, played aggressive football, and then Ohio State, again, tries to be tactical, so they're going up in the air. They try and hit them with the play on the ground and take advantage maybe of a hard pass rush, and they're stopped cold. So Tim Williams will come on to attempt another field goal, or a field goal, I should say, from the 23, a 33-yard attempt. He pushed it to the right, then it's no good. 
A heck of a series by Iowa, Swanee, as they turn him away when it was first and goal inside the 10. It, it looked awfully dark for the Hawkeye defense with, it, with Ohio State possessing the ball on the nine-yard line. But a great stand by that defensive unit, some big plays. There's been a lot of pressure today on the Iowa defense, and we asked head coach Aiden Pratt what the Hawkeyes had to do defensively in order to win this game today. Well, no question. Uh, we have to really upgrade our run defense. We normally are first or second in the Big Ten traditionally against the rush. Uh, we uh, haven't been able to stop anyone pregame warm up this year. Well, that's a little bit of an understatement on Hayden's part, but it's almost true. Greg Smith, the nose guard, number 57, came through very quickly to get Lampkin for a loss on first down of about two yards. So it'll be second down and 12. And the Buckeye defense, as you look at 57, the 250-pound senior, coming right back at Iowa. I have to say congratulations to Greg Smith because he has been awarded the National Football Foundation Scholarship, which is a two-year fellowship. He'll be presented that award officially November 8th at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. And he's from the hometown of the Hall of Fame. Anthony. Lots of time on second down. Gets it out of the backfield of Cliff King, who's in at running back. But King sliding down. Picked up maybe a yard is all. King, a junior out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. The ball just short of the 20. So it'll be third and 10. Kind of situation offensive unit hates to be in. Long yardage situation. Two wideouts to the left. Dane and Hughes and Whitaker. Hyde looking for help. He'll be sacked back at the 10 yard line by Lorenzo Stiles, number 90. And the crowd is very as Matt Ide had all the time in the world and then again unable to find anybody finally unable to get away well watch him as he scrambles around he's going to get pressure as as these defensive men rushing in but he's looking downfield now but now he's stopped looking he's not really looking downfield at that point point. and meanwhile Ohio State blocks the attempted punt by Scott Fisher Paul came up with the ball. Tito Paul, number nine, came into this game having blocked two punts. His teammates come in there. Again, that was Jason Lewis, number 28, who made the block, and Tito Paul is there for the recovery. Touchdown. Ohio State. Leading now 27-7. Williams will attempt yet another extra point. And he is perfect as usual. Ohio State finding another way to score. As they lead it now 28-7 with 6.35 to go on the second quarter. Big freshman Corey Stringer, number 78 for Ohio State, shaken up on the play and is being attended to on the sidelines. Jason Lewis of the Buckeyes, number 28, that of course is not he. First tackling the punter, then blocking a punt in the end zone that turned in to a touchdown. A big day for Jason Lewis, the freshman backup safety. This being Halloween, a lot of other Jasons. <laughs> yeah, in masks. Watch out for the hockey mask. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Willie Guy and Harold Jasper are back looking for the kickoff from Ted Williams. Tim Williams. He's been hitting so often that hitting the ball so much, he's like Ted Williams today. He has been out there like he's an every play player practically. Javik might be just a tad higher than 400, though. <laughs> he's 1,000. He's perfect so far, especially on those extra points. High short 
kick, Willie Guy from the nine. Nowhere to run except into the arms of Alex Rodriguez, who again makes the stop on the special teams, number 48. I, I think I think we have to try and remember that Ohio State, when they came onto the field, I don't think they knew that the final score was 24-17 Michigan against Purdue. They may have come out in the field thinking that Purdue was ahead in that ball game and that Purdue had beaten Michigan or Michigan were to lose prior to meeting Ohio State, then that could set up, would have set up a matchup for the Rose Bowl between Ohio State and Michigan. That's true. They might not have known. Ryan Terry and Lou Montgomery in the backfield behind Matt Ive. Play action on first down. Over the middle and incomplete intended for Ryan Terry, but again it's overthrown. And the Iowa fans are not liking it at all. A reminder coming up at halftime here on ABC, the Prudential Halftime Report featuring John Saunders with scores and highlights of all the action from around the country for you today, so stay with us. John will be there with a Prudential Halftime Report. Matt Ide has completed just 6 of 13 for 52 yards. A little quick history here. Last year, it was Cross, the tight end, who scored on a 61-yard touchdown play, Allen Cross similar to the play they've been trying to get to all afternoon. So Ohio State was very well prepared for them to come after them in that fashion. Play action in the backfield with a scissors play of sorts, and Ryan Terry carrying out to about the 28, tackled by Mark Williams, number 51. Let's go down and get a report from Mark Jones. Mark, you drive. Uh, just a little bit, Steve. I just spoke with Dr. Bob Murphy of Ohio State. He tells me that Corey Stringer, the starting right tackle, has a sprained left ankle. They're going to take him into the locker room at halftime, reevaluate the situation, and see if he'll be able to go in the second half. Back upstairs to you guys, and stay dry. <laughs> well, we got a little cold and a little wind, but not nearly as much as you've got down there, so. Iowa 1 of 5 on third down conversions. It's third and three. Hyde again has plenty of protection. But it's going to be short as Lampkin will pick up just one or two out to the 30, short of the first down again. 51, Mark Williams was there to blast him out of bounds. They needed three yards or so on this first down. And you look at it from Matt Ide's perspective, he's got to get a receiver beyond that first down mark. He has his receiver, Lampkin, crossing the field, but short of it, well in front of the first down marker than underneath the linebacker. Someone needed to slip behind those linebackers and get that ball for the first down. Well, Scott Fisher's gonna try to get it away and he has pressure again, but he got it away. Walter Taylor, not much running room, but he gets it out to about the 44 of Ohio State, where the Buckeyes will again enjoy pretty good field position. A 34-yard punt, 5.48 to go in the second quarter, and Ohio State up big. Tomorrow night here on ABC, Halloween continues for one more day with a special holiday edition of America's Funniest Home Videos. Then, at a special earlier time, Julia Roberts and Richard Gere star in the network premiere of Pretty Woman on the ABC Sunday night movie, Tomorrow Night. Ohio State leading 28-7. They have enjoyed good field position. They have enjoyed the ability to do pretty much whatever they want to with the ball. Butler Bonote and Raymond Harris in the backfield. Raymond Harris carrying. He has been the leading rusher for Ohio State, a 225-pound junior. And he picks up a first down as he gets it into Iowa territory at the Hawkeye 46. His number is coming into the game, 340 yards five touchdowns. He's considered to be a stronger inside runner than an outside runner. Crawford back in at fullback and he has the ball. Stood up as he crossed the line of scrimmage by Jeff Nelson, number 93 at defensive tackle. And Nelson appears to be shaken up as he took big Jeff Cothran on face to face. I'll tell you, that, that would be a big loss for this defensive unit. We'll take a break while they attend to Jeff Nelson, a senior out of Stillwater, Minnesota, and be back in just a minute. Back upstairs to you guys. And certainly the healing process 
takes quite a while for all those students and family members who were affected by that tragedy as it was that time last year that Iowa was playing Ohio State in Columbus. Let's go back and look again at Cothran and Nelson and the collision that led to the injury of Jeff Nelson. Here's Cothran, the ball carrier, coming into the hole. And here comes 93 Nelson right there as he makes contact, you know, with his head and his shoulders, and he's driven backwards. Now, folks, he's being taken off the field on a stretcher. Now, that does not mean that it is as serious as it appears. But certainly throughout all of college, the medical staff, the training staff, all the coaches take a very conservative approach to any kind of neck or head or back injury. So they want to make sure they get this young man off the field and get some x-rays or even an MRI to make sure that he is okay. Because you can have a slight hairline fracture or sprain or something like that and still feel like you can come back in and play. Just kind of say it's just sore get hit again and that could lead to a much more serious injury absolutely they take no chances and when a guy that big it took him quite a while to get him gingerly moved over to the board and then carried off so we certainly hope that jeff nelson is not as seriously injured as it might appear and we'll hope to have a report for you before the game is over raymond harris in a tailback on second down for ohio state and he has the football Getting away and inside the 35 down to the 31. John Hartley finally makes the stop. Larry Blue had a chance to get him at the line of scrimmage and somehow he got away for a gain of 11. See Raymond Harris carrying the ball, that great, terrific leg strength of his as you look at the comparison of rushing stats for Ohio State and Iowa. It's a first down for Ohio State at the Iowa 31 as they just keep driving. Harris again. Nowhere to go this time. Waiting in the hole. 88, Maria Crane. And 48, Matt Hillier. Maria Crane at 6'3 and 255. Good quickness for nose guard. That time he was able to engage and get off his block. Look at number 88 right in the center. You see him make contact with the center. The play's moving to the outside. He slides off the block, then upfield, and gets in on the tackle. Number 97, Jason Dumont, is in there replacing the injured Jeff Nelson at defensive tackle. Hartley firing its tip, but incomplete. It looked like Tyrone Boudreaux, number 37, got a hand on it. But it fell to the turf beyond the reach of any Hawkeye. And let's get another report from Mark Jones on the sideline. Mark. All right, Steve, just a few moments ago, I spoke with the medical staff from the University of Iowa. They tell me that Jeff Nelson just jammed his neck, and they have immobilized it. They are taking him in to X take x-rays as a precautionary measure, but, and a huge but, he can move all of his extremities. So that, indeed, is good news. Back right, upstairs. Huh? Thanks a lot, Mark. That's a great report that he can move his arms and legs. And his family, I'm sure, is very happy to hear that. Hartley out of the shotgun over the middle. Incomplete intended for a diving Alan de Graffenried. Third Street now has only thrown two incomplete passes. The last two passes he's thrown, he'd been perfect up until that time, and there you see Jeff Nelson being taken to the hospital. Well, I was trying to figure out whether he was throwing to DeGraff and Reed, or that might have been Greg Beatty, who was running behind him. He threw that hard enough to reach the man running behind him. Timeout called on the field by Ohio State, stopping the clock with 3.48 remaining and we'll pause five seconds to allow our local abc stations to identify themselves ohio state leading big 28 7 here in the second quarter they face however a fourth and nine they've scored on every possession save one where tim williams missed 
a field goal attempt. And with the rain falling and the field being very wet and slick, placements are not easy. But Williams is out there and he's going to mark the ball at about the 38 on the far hash. Well, he is 10 for 17 if you count the missed field goal earlier today. And his longest field goal, 50 yards. And this one, let's see where he spots the ball. All right, 10 yards, that's in the end zone. That's going to be about 48. Officially, they call it a 47-yard attempt. No good. Had some distance, but he hooked it to the left. Well, certainly when your defensive unit is playing strong enough to hold Iowa to just 12 yards rushing at this point in the ball game, uh, you have no qualms about letting Williams come in and attempt one from 50 yards away or 47 yards away. Well, let's go back and take a look at some history of college football. It was back in 1981 that we feature our college football rewind for you this afternoon. So let's rewind it back to 1981. Ohio State and Iowa Big Ten co-champions, Paul Bear Bryant becomes college football's winningest coach, number 315. Dave Winfield making a paltry 1.4 million, the richest player in baseball. And Indiana won the men's NCAA basketball title. Lou Montgomery carrying on first down for Iowa for very short yardage. When I, when I saw that rewind information, I was, I was just wondering how Winfield could make it on on, on such a low salary, only 1.4 million. Well, that shows you, you know, how far we've come in the last 11 years. I know Bonilla is making over five, and uh, who's the highest paid player in baseball? You. I, I wish it were me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, they're up to about seven, Fantastic. seven million a year for, for seven, yeah. Yes. Rhino's making about seven and a half million. I'd again can't find anybody open, even though he had plenty of time. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Tom Lease, number 81, drags him down for Ohio State. And I think you're right, Swanee. I mean, Ohio State's got to find defense. But they can't have everybody covered on every play. And Ide has almost never been able to find anybody open. And Iowa looks to be attacking it, as I said, vertically, down the outside and down the middle. I think they're going to have much more success if they can get some across. Behind the linebackers who are dropping back about 10, 15 yards and dump it into a big hole that's being created when the receivers are rushing up the field. Now on third and nine, it looks like they're going to flood the left side. Now they throw to Montgomery on the backfield. He gets away. Lou Montgomery up to about the 38. A penalty flag goes down as Roger Harper, 24. The strong safety made the tackle. It may be a face mask. Derek Foster... Number 94 had a chance, but missed him. A personal foul, not a face mask signal, against Iowa State will be tacked on to the end of the play. Dead ball, lead hit, defense, first down. Well, Iowa on its only touchdown in the game thus far was helped greatly by a couple of miscues, a couple of fumbles that they picked up in, in a 75-yard drive, accounted for 31 yards, 37 yards of that particular drive. Now get a big penalty to give them the first down. And they are in Ohio State territory at the 47. I flipping out again to Montgomery, and right there to drop him immediately is number 90, Lorenzo Stiles. Stiles, a freshman out of Farrell, Pennsylvania, with another big play. The defensive unit, the linebackers especially, are dropping back in the zone so quickly that they, can, they then get set up and they can read what's happening in the backfield. And you see Matt I do, using a little play action. They haven't successfully established a running game. So why even worry about play action? Exactly. Because it's not fooling any of the linebackers from Ohio State. They need to start running the football if they are to have overall success and certainly run play action passes. But I dropping straight back. Again, he has time. Marvin Lampkin out of the backfield for short yardage to the 45 and a gain of two. Again, Lorenzo Stiles along with number 18, Tim Walton, to make the stop. They have not been able to get the ball upfield either. He's been doing a lot of throwing to the backs. 
They haven't been able to get the ball upfield. They haven't been able to isolate their tremendous receiver, uh, Danon Hughes, at all. You see Matt Ide just picking up Lampkin coming across on the short pass play. Third down and almost nine yards to go as we near the end of the first half. Again, good protection. And it's complete to cross the tight end. Cross down to the 26. Roger Harris, the strong, or Harper, the strong safety on the stop. That is, that is exactly the area of the field I'm talking about in terms of exploiting at too deep as Iowa goes into a hurry-up offense. A big hole was created in the middle by the drop of the secondary, and that's the first time Allen Cross and Iowa has been able to take advantage of it. Gain of 20. Clock restarts after the chains are set. 30 seconds in the half. Ide again to Allen Cross, who gets out of bounds inside the 20. Tackled by Tim Walton. 26 seconds remaining in the half. And Iowa could get a big get scoreboard and psychological boost if they can punch it in here, Swan. Alan Cross has picked up the, the slack in the passing game. When Iowa played Michigan, Damon Hughes was really banged up in that ball game and had only a handful of catches coming in today's game since then. So he picked up the slack. They both came into this game with 34 catches, but it's Alan Cross that's keeping him alive in this drive. Cross, the senior tight end from San Diego. Play action. Ide in trouble. Gets away again. Almost intercepted. Oh, Brian Cook came across and almost picked it off. And that ran the clock down to seven seconds remaining. Jason Simmons chasing Matt Ide all over the place. Look at 87, Alan Cross. Here's a tight end. He is wide open. At this point, there is another defensive back within 10 yards of him. And look at him. That's why he's not moving, coming back to the quarterback like most receivers should. He just says, come on, find me. Lift your head up. Look at me. I'm here. I'm not a ghost. Now watch I. He's scrambling. Watch where his head's looking to see if he can pick him out. He's looking downfield, but he's looking at people right in front of him. He's not looking at the full picture. Now he's just scrambling for his life, hoping he can get out of a bad situation and it's already bad enough because the clock is just slowly ticking down. He's fortunate at this point that he doesn't throw the interception. Brian Cook almost picked it off. The pass was intended again for Montgomery, and it appears as if Matt Ide is looking for the backs out of the backfield rather than the deep receivers. Yes, and, and, and it's, I'm not really trying to, to, to bring Ide down and, and, and say he's not doing a good job. He's doing the very best that he can. But these are the mistakes that happen when you don't have the experience. And the only way you learn and do better is to be in a pressured game, go back, see your mistakes, and then improve the next week. It is third down and three. The ball is at the 18 of Ohio State, but just seven seconds remain on the clock. I throwing back and throwing deep. He had one foot in. Harold Jasper thought he had a foot in also. The officials looked at each other before ma anybody made a call and finally signaled incomplete as time has run out in the first half. Let's see if we can discern whether or not Jasper had one foot in bounds. Here's Ive. He's getting ready to throw the bullet. Well, let's watch Jasper, number 83, right here on the sideline. He looks, oh, his right foot, his left foot is out of bounds as he makes the catch. Looked like he had one and one half feet in, but it's ruled incomplete and at halftime. Ohio State leading 28-7 over Iowa. All in Iowa City at halftime. Steve Zabriskie, Lynn Swan, and Mark Jones with you from Kinnick Stadium, and it has been all Ohio State as the Buckeyes lead the Hawkeyes 28 to 7. And Ohio State has been doing it on the ground. Uh, in this ball game, they have dominated the possession time, 16 minutes, but they have rushed for 173 73 yards in the first half, of which Robert Smith has carried the ball 13 times for 92 yards and two touchdowns. For Iowa, 
the main story has really been indecision in terms of their passing game. You look at the number of plays run also in terms of the halftime stats, 34 plays each, but the field position has been phenomenal for Ohio State. They've come in, they've, they've blocked the punt for a touchdown. They've blocked or tackled the punter into an excellent field position in Iowa just has not had anything happen for them on offense. And I think, too, the real key, Swanee, for them in the second half is going to be can they get a running game going, take the pressure off Matt Ide a little bit, and control the football a little more consistently. Something they've had a problem with. Well, our halftime report, the Prudential halftime report with John Saunders coming up. Let's go to New York and John right now. From ABC Sports, the Prudential halftime report. Brought to you by Prudential. When it comes to insurance, real estate, and investments, there is one certainty. The financial strength of the rock. The Prudential. Rock solid. From New York, John Saunders. And we welcome those of you watching Ohio State and Iowa, as well as Florida and Georgia. Second half still ahead, but first, time for the Prudential Halftime Report. We'll start off with the number two team in the nation. The Washington Hawks. And at the end of the first half, he had 13 carries for 92 and two touchdowns. And that second one was a result of fine blocking. Then they got another touchdown to Ohio State as this punt, rather, was blocked by number 28, Jason Lewis. And then Tito Paul, number nine, who has blocked two punts of his own coming into this game, recovers it for the six points. Needless to say, it's been pretty much all Buckeyes. Ohio State dominating in almost every category. Iowa had an opportunity, and it appeared that they scored on the final play of the first half. However, while the receiver who made the reception for Iowa, number 83, Harold Jasper, appeared to be inbounds with at least one foot in the end zone, it was ruled that he was not. And so it was ruled to be an incompleted pass and the half ended with Iowa being turned away on one of the few drives they've had. And the officials called him out of bounds and then upon further review of our unofficial replay, <laughs> he did have a foot out of bounds and it was a good call. Todd Romano to kick it off. Back deep, Robert Smith, 26, and Butler Bonote, 33, for Iowa State, or Ohio State, I think should say. Bonote from the 10. Good hole! Finally brought down inside the 45. And they're saying he stepped out of bounds back at the 39 or so yard line. They're going to bring it back into Ohio State territory. Obviously, Butler Bonote has great style, but uh, Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey won't ask him to come in and do the high wire act. As he gets to the sideline, a great job of blocking by the unit. But watch here as he just steps out of bounds right there, and they bring it back. So good field position for Ohio State, first and 10 at their own 39. Cothran and Smith in the backfield behind Kirk Herbstreet. Robert Smith breaking through again. Jason Olenzak finally runs him down with help from Tyrone Boudreau, number 37. And that is exactly the same play that they opened up with at the beginning of their first possession of the first quarter. The difference is he picks up just over 10 on that play. We had 26 yards before. And again, the fullback, number eight, Jeff Crossman, doing a good job blocking for him. Smith now is over 100 yards on 14 carries and averaging a healthy nearly seven and a half yards of pop. Robert Smith again picking his way. And if the umpire would have gotten out of his way, he might have had a first down. He's down to the 40 of Iowa for a gain of about nine. Doug Book, the free safety, number 18 on the stop. Offensive line again doing a terrific job in the middle. Look at Kaufman engaging, hitting people. And there's the official. And he is <laughs> he is offering no resistance, but he is certainly blocking Robert Smith from moving further downfield. Jason Winrow, a 300 pound junior offensive tackle down there. And you can see our crew, and not the only one is Mark Jones out there in the elements, but our crew is also braving this heavy rain. Mike Jeff Wells. Number 64, the man who makes a stop on Jeff Cothran as he takes it right up the middle. 
Wells at 280, a junior from Arnold, Missouri. Well, the Ohio State Buckeye rushing game is doing so well as you see another one of our cameramen exposed to the elements. Now, why are the cameras better protected than the cameramen? That's what I want to know. <laughs> are they more, I won't venture more a guess on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both pretty well protected. Third down, about three and a half yards to go. Robert Smith, first down. Breaking tackle, staying on his feet and getting down to the 31. Robert Smith has surprising strength. And you don't really see it when you look at his bill. You know, he's a he's a tall, slender back. And I'd say if, if they lift him at, what, 6'2"? I'd, I'd say that he's, if he's 6 feet 2 inches tall, then 5 feet 6 inches is all legs. Yeah, he's got some <laughs> long Look at those wheel. long legs. Usually that presents a problem for a running back. I mean, we're accustomed to seeing the receivers like a Jerry Rice or a Stavewine, who is, uh, we haven't heard much of today because of the running game so going so well, having those long legs. Matt Hilliard just stuck Jeff Cothran after Cothran came through and picked up a couple of yards. Hilliard put him right on his back. That's what you call a form tackle. And Matt Hilliard and... 42, John Hartlieb and Mike Daly, number 38. Tyrone Boudreaux will be calling the game quite a bit, number 37. Uh, we can expect to see Coughlin a bit more because the running backs have been having great success, i.e. Robert Smith. But I think now they figure give it to the fullback a little bit, make sure you don't wear their guys out. Custom to see if they're prepared for the short, quick hitting run. Second down, about seven. The ball inside the Iowa 30. Herb Street. Incomplete. No, they're going to say he made the catch. Chris Sanders, Carlos James is complaining that the ball hit the turf before Sanders made the catch. I thought it hit the turf, but they're saying he caught it for a gain of 13 down to the 15-yard line. It's not one of those plays you can easily call, but look at the ball. It gets over. Watch him. He's got his body down underneath. You miss it because number 18, Doug Book, goes over the top, but Chris Sanders was on his back making the catch. That was a fine job. Sanders, a sophomore out of Denver, Colorado, with an excellent reception, and Robert Smith banging down to about 11, to the 11, where he is banged down by Doug Book. With help from Jason Dumont, number 97. That catch for Sanders was his third for 39 yards on the day. Take a look at Sanders. He's a track man. Long jump, 26 feet, 9 and 3 quarters inches. I mean, he gets down on the ground to make this catch. That's that's a highlight film. Yep. That's a big-time reception as he kept his body between the ball and the ground. You can see the rain continuing to pour down. Many of the faithful have left. In fact, the faithful have stayed. <laughs> yeah, the very faithful are still here. The uh, uh, fair weather and uh, I've got a Halloween party to go to that starts early, fan, has, uh, has gotten a head start. We're watching the second half on TV where it's a little drier. Second down, five. The ball is a 10. Raymond Harris tapped to the backfield for a loss of five or six. Tyrone Boudreaux shot through there and busted up the play. And Larry Blue, number 95, wrapped up Raymond Harris. Well, Tyrone Boudreaux, number 37, he came charging through as you take a look at Larry Blue, number 95. And I thought he was going to just take the handoff. Watch him right there. He is right in between the quarterback and Raymond Harris. And then Blue just sweeps him up. Take a look right here, 37, Boudreaux. He's playing a terrific game this afternoon. He is. And there's Blue. 36 tackle coming into the game. Robert Smith back in at tailback for Ohio State on third and ten. Hauled well down at the line of scrimmage for no gain by Mike Wells, number 64. And that time, John Hartley, number 42, the outside backer, does the job extremely well of taking on Jeff Cothran, who has been dominating with his blocks and is able to turn back on the play, and then is assisted by Mike Wells for the stop. So Tim Williams comes on to attempt the field goal as Iowa stiffens down deep in their own territory. 
This will be a 33-yard attempt. And it is good. In the rain and on the wet surface, Tim Williams boots another field goal. And with 9.38 to go in the third quarter, it's now Ohio State leading over political race has been almost a marathon and uh, while you look at this fellow on Halloween, I want to ask you to be sure and vote. Regardless of who you may vote for, don't forget to vote on election day on Tuesday. Absolutely. Don't complain about the process when you're not a part of it. There you go. Harold Jasper and Willie Guy are back as Tim Williams will kick it off. The very busy Tim Williams as Ohio State's out in front. A very high, very short kick. Willie Guy looks at it and watches it go out of bounds. There's a flag fly. We want to take a minute here to wish the very best to Eugene Rowe, the father of Ohio, or Iowa, rather, assistant SID Steve Rowe. Steve Rowe's dad is recovering from a heart attack at Mercy Hospital here in Iowa City. The ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. So Iowa will get it first and 10 at the 35. Robert Smith with more rushing yards than Iowa has amassed in total yards today. Iowa's biggest problem offensively, they have not been able to rush the ball. Well, in, in conjunction with that quote that was on the uh, board of the Iowa locker room, and Robert Smith said he was as good as Marshall Falk. <laughs> at least comparatively speaking for this afternoon, he's doing better than Marshall Falk, who only gained about 67 yards, and no touchdown. He has over 102. First and 10 at the 35. Iowa needs a drive desperately. On the reverse, Dane and Hughes trying to throw the pass, it looked like. Now he fake pumps, and he is blasted out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds by Marlon Kerner. The play didn't work. Let's go to John Saunders. He always works. Stedford in Washington. Mark Brunel for the second time today turning nothing into a touchdown here. Jason Shelley by the time Brunel scrambles out of trouble is wide open and into the end zone for the touchdown. Washington up 27-7. Thank you, John. The Huskies are asserting themselves and right here if you check out the replay again you'll see a guy trying to assert himself. Montgomery the ball carrier. As he busted straight ahead for pretty good yardage. Now we'll go back to the replay. Number three, Dan Hughes is a man on that reverse. And what's important on this play is not how many yards he gets because it's, the intent is broken up pretty good. But watch him as he takes on Marlon Kerner, number 46. He's going to run. They're going to make contact. And he is going to deliver the bigger blow to Kerner right there. And Kerner wanted to come back onto the field, but his coaches were there and said, sorry, come off to the side, take a little break. I don't think Kerner knew which way the field was, actually. Yeah. Into that hit. Montgomery again, he's got a hole. And Lou rumbles into Ohio State territory at the Buckeye 45. Walter Taylor, the safety, and Roger Harper, the other safety, bring him down. And all those people who left the game because of the weather might be very disappointed if this is one of the great comebacks in Iowa football history. Montgomery for a gain of 13. He just slashes off tackle. Look at the great lead block he gets there from Velasair, number 73. And he just freaks to the outside. First down, Iowa at the Ohio State 45. Ohio State leading dead here in the third quarter with time and overthrows his intended receiver Damon Hughes incomplete even though Walton came up and said I've got it he got it on the bounce and Damon Hughes Glenn, has really not been a factor in this game and he is a guy that should be key for the Iowa offense he should be key and matter of fact he is even though he hasn't really come up with a lot of catches this afternoon he has been moving down the field forcing the coverage by the bit as he moves down the field and stretches that secondary, he creates pockets that are open underneath him. The problem has been, in terms of Matt Ide and his inexperience, getting receivers into that open area and picking them up. Matt Ide has completed 12 of 22 for 90 yards. Going along this time and overthrowing Harold Jasper. 
He was covered by Chico Nelson, but there is a penalty flag down. Back in the Iowa backfield. That's that holding territory as indicated by our referee. Jerry Hendrickson's preliminary indication. And the option now will rest at Ohio State as it would bring up a third and long. San Diego State. Marshall didn't have 100, but he had 18, Colorado State. 18 for 60 yards and no touchdown. A&M as expected in the fourth quarter all over SMU. And in the third, Florida leading Georgia. I'll tell you what, those Gators are tough anywhere in the state. Nebraska big over Colorado. Winning a big game. We have 8.08 to go in the third quarter. The penalty moving the ball back to the 39 of Iowa. There is now second down and about 26 yards to go. Hyde firing and completing it to Allen Cross, the tight end. Cross chased down by the leading tackler, Steve Tovar. Little linebacker for Ohio State, but almost got all that yardage back. A gain of 24. Allen Cross has been a thorn in the side of the Buckeyes for a couple of years now. As I said earlier, he came up with a big 61-yard touchdown catch and reception that beat Ohio State last year in Columbus. Now today, he continues to roll through that secondary as he's crossing the field in a good, easy pattern to be picked up by Matt I and picking up strong yardage after making the catch. It brings up third and two from the Ohio State 37. Tied with time. Incomplete intended for Marvin Lampkin. And Lampkin just couldn't get to it. Marvin Lampkin looked like he was not sure of himself as he just kind of drifted down the field, looking back into the backfield. His head seemed to be turning back as if he wasn't quite certain if he was the guy he should be going to. And the ball is thrown right there, and he doesn't see it fast enough to make the inside move, adjusting to the, to the pass. Iowa going to go for it on fourth down, and this year they are 7 of 19 on fourth down attempts, fourth and two. I being chased. completes it. Marvin Lampkin at the 23-yard line. First down. Well, there was no mistake about it that time. That eye scrambling at backfield just winds up. Tried to drill one into Lampkin's chest. The ball was a bit low. You see him scrambling, but Marvin Lampkin gets down concentrating all the way on this pass comes up with the catch in the first down big play for the Hawkeyes they keep the ball seven and a half minutes to go in the third they have a lot of time but they have a long way to go Ryan Terry trying to cut back slogging through the wetness and Jason Simmons number 91 and Craig Powell 84 are waiting for him well, we've been talking about Matt Ives it's been a tough afternoon for him here He's a gutsy kid. I mean, as you said, he started out at Michigan State and then saw quickly that that program he felt wasn't the right one for him. And there's a rule. So he transferred and came here to Iowa. But in the Big Ten, there's a rule. You can't play football and be on scholarship at another Big Ten school. So he has paid his dad has paid his way through, and he is not a scholarship player for the Hawkeyes. Nor can he be as a walk-on my earn a scholarship. Matt, I cannot. Firing it long into the end zone and over the head of Damon Hughes. Hughes had a step, but the ball overthrown. And it'll be third and long. Let's get an update on the injury to Jeff Nelson from Mark Jones. Well, Steve and Lynn, good news for the University of Iowa. The, coming from the University of Iowa Hospital, Jeff Nelson's x-rays proved to be negative. He just has a bit of a sore neck, and he will be okay. Back up to you. Thanks, Mark. That is good news. And if you were with us, you saw Jeff Nelson being taken off on the stretcher. And every precaution taken. And we hope that he has a 100% recovery. Third down, nine, Iowa. High now under pressure. Firing it and incomplete. Intended for Harold Jasper. And Jasper busted the coverage man, Chico Nelson, and picks up a flag. 
It looks like it should be on Hal Jasper all the way. The ball's thrown way outside, and look at Jasper. He's going to cut a field. Well, there's a little pushing on the part of Nelson before the ball is thrown. It may be on Nelson. You know, and that push to Jasper at the end was yeah. unnecessary. Usually, it's the guy that retaliates, however, that gets the flag. But from the way Chico's reacting, it looks as if the penalty might be on him, and it is. It's against Chico Nelson. Well, there's one time where the retaliator didn't <laughs> get the flag. Did not get the flag. I, I, I don't think in, in, I don't think Chico should be complaining so much about the call. He did come up from behind and push him. I, and the official was in perfect position. That'll move the ball inside the 10. They will spot it at about the seven and a half. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. Ohio State leading Iowa 31 to seven. As they scored early and often on long drives in the first half. And the Buckeyes built the lead, but the Hawkeyes are trying to come back. It is first and goal. Jeff Ansel is in the ball game with Damon Hughes. And this is the 11th play of this drive. Damon Hughes in motion. A delay to Lampton. Nowhere to run. Tovar right there. Steve Tovar waiting for Marvin Lampton. No gain on the play. All-American middle linebacker. Great physical tool. Been playing strong for his team. And he just reads his play very well. All too often you get, a, get some people on that defensive side of the ball. They think, well, you've got to throw the football. And they get a hard rush and you run by the guy carrying the football. But that time... Tovar just stayed home, ready to play. Routine tackle. Tovar, a senior from Elyria, Ohio. Complete to Lampkin. Hit immediately by Chico Nelson, the free safety. So Chico got a hit in there, but a short gain on the play. You know, Iowa down here, Lynn needs to punch the ball more north and south when they get inside the 10, don't you think? They, they should, but they haven't had, as we stated, the great success with the running game. They've got a couple of players going off tackle, but they can't just punch it right up the middle against Ohio State. They now face third down and goal from the seven. I slipping and falling at the 20. Well, count the pressure. Jason Simmons, number 91, in there. Jason Simmons, number 91. And give, and give the sack to the grass. <laughs> and the rain. <laughs> and the rain. Well, it's a loss of 13. And it'll bring up fourth and goal from the 20. And there is big Jason. He's a tough man. He came into the game last week. Playing well. Went out with a bruised thigh. Came back in the ball game. And today he is showing no signs of the injury, no ill effects whatsoever. Iowa must go for it on fourth and goal from the 20. Hyde looking deep. Tipped and incomplete. Going up and getting a hand on it is Roger Harper, the strong safety. As it goes out the back of the end zone, Ohio State will take over when we come back. Well, to add to the frustration, Iowa just went on a 12-play, 58-yard drive. It took almost five and a half minutes. They came away with no points. So, Ohio State back on offense, first and 10. Raymond Harrison at tailback as they operate from their own 20, leading 31-7. Harris picking his way forward for about eight yards. Out to the 28. And a reminder, Monday night here on ABC, it's NFL Monday Night Football, a little black and blue division action. The Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. Dennis Green going against Mike Ditka. Be with us at 9 Eastern Time, live, 8 Central here on ABC, Monday Night Football. Well, Ohio State continues to roll as they've been averaging 5.9 for rush every time they carry the football versus Iowa's 1.2 yards per rush. 
Uh, it's a big story in this game, in Ohio State's long drive, pounding and pounding, and Cothran getting the first down as he turns across the 30, Tyrone Boudreaux, number 37 on the stop, but it's a first down for the Buckeyes. And when their running attack is working that well, other things seem to just connect and go along for the ride. I mean, Herb Street is leading the team very well at quarterback, but he's had no pressure on him. He hasn't had to force the ball in the air, try to go for the big play. We come into this into this game, and, and Ohio State has been sacked 18 times. At this point, none. They have dominated, and when Iowa has had an opportunity and gone on a drive, they've twice come away with no points. Once in the second quarter, once here in the third. Raymond Harris cutting it back and getting out to about the 40 before he's knocked down by Carlos James, number five. Big Dave Mono, number 77, the right guard, got out there in front and doing a little zone blocking. So as the ball carrier runs parallel to the line of scrimmage, when that hole pops open, then he has to take advantage of it. And that hole may pop open anywhere. It could pop open just outside the end or all the way to the sideline. See Mono there. It was an offensive tackle. Penn State upset by BYU 30 to 17 today. Nittany Lions have had a tough streak of late. Second down and short. Cochran fighting for a yard or two and he'll be short of the first down. We're gonna mark it at about the 41. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. TV5 WEWS Cleveland. Hard to identify anybody on a day like today because everybody's covered up as best they can. Furmeister, the backup quarterback on the headset on the Iowa sideline. And he may be getting ready. It is third down and two for Ohio State at their own 41. Final moments of the third quarter on the option. Third Street stringing it out and he won't get anywhere. He had Raymond Harris, but Harris did him no good. And Larry Blue did a good job of stringing out the play. Every time they've run the option today, they've handed the ball off on the inside and it's been stopped. Right? And, and it leads some people on offense to believe, well, we'll keep the ball, go to the outside, and we'll pitch it. But the Iowa defense has been doing a good job of just reading that handoff. They stopped the play on the inside when he didn't give the ball up that last time. They just followed laterally, stayed with the quarterback, stayed with their assignment, so their heads are still in this ball game, which is a good sign. And they have played the defense, or the option, rather, very, very well. Joel Kessel is going to punt for the first time today. It's the first time Ohio State has had to punt. Taken by Jeff Antela on the fair catch at the 33. So Iowa will get another shot. With 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, we'll be back. All is brought to you this afternoon by the Honda Accord, celebrating its 10th anniversary of production in the United States. 15 minutes remaining in a very soggy Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City. Big number 70, Matt Bonhaus, the defensive tackle for Iowa. As we start the fourth quarter on second down, Dana Hughes with another reception. And Paul Burmeister, Lynn, is doing what we have wondered why Iowa had not been doing, and that is trying to find Dana Hughes. Finding him on the short pass, his arm, his accuracy right on target in the passes he has thrown so far. Just short of a first down. It is third down and about a foot to go. Marvin Lampkin hit by Steve Povar, but he should have enough for a first down right at the 40. Well, as we start this fourth quarter, let's look back at the last three and see how this game is played. <laughs> well, if you haven't been watching, the game has been all Ohio State rushing the ball 227 yards. Time of possession, five minutes more. And very interesting though, they've had 48 plays to Iowa's 51. Iowa has had more opportunity and obviously done less with it. I think too that you have to go back and look at what you talked about a little bit earlier, and that's the per play yardage. Now when you're averaging 7.4 per play or 6.1 per rush, 
You can be anywhere in the football field. You don't need a lot of play. And he completes it to Harold Jasper. Iowa going without the huddle. It's a first down at the 26 of Ohio State. Iowa has about 14 minutes remaining in the game with which to operate, but they are down 31-7. Burmeister on a delay. Marvin Lampkin grabbed in the backfield by Tovar. Steve Tovar, who really wasn't a big factor defensively in the first half, has really asserted himself here in the second half. He stepped up the pace from that middle linebacking position, taking a little more charge of this defensive unit. They have him at the inside position for a variety of reasons. One being his great speed, where he can cut up inside and stop a play inside out. Loss of two, second down 12. Burmeister getting away, incomplete. Now a catch by Jasper. Dana Hughes tipped the ball, and Harold Jasper came behind and picked it off. It's first and goal at the six. Well, he may be working now on the football field, but he's certainly not missing out on this trick-or-treating. <laughs> There's a Halloween play right there. <laughs> Another 24-yard gain that you could chalk up to ghost yardage. We've had a lot of that today. And Hal Jasper has been in the middle of most of it. That's right. Recovering one fumble way downfield. Burmeister, good protection now, firing incomplete. Now that's a heady move by Burmeister, something that Matt Ide didn't do enough of when he was in the ball game. He was in trouble, he was in the pocket, and the pocket collapsing around him. But instead of trying to run out of it and make something happen, he got rid of that football. You don't waste the time on the clock, you get rid of the ball, and you just start over the next play. And this time, Burmeister just firing it through the end zone incomplete. They stopped the clock, and it gave him a chance to regroup. They had been going on this drive without a huddle. So now a play sent in from the sideline into the game at running back number 43, Cliff King. Flower eye formation and King in motion, two tight ends. Ryan Perry, touchdown! <laughs> Sophomore running back Ryan Perry out of Steubenville, Ohio. Taking it in, and Iowa, the faithful that remain in the rain, have had very little to cheer about, but they are happy now as Iowa has driven to their second score. The folks that are still in the stands have been treated by Paul Burmeister's insertion into this game. To see this young man try and take charge here in this final period of play. They will go for the two-point conversion. Burmeister, flag down, throws it to Montgomery, who cuts it back. And Montgomery in, but a penalty marker down. Very important that he got into that end zone. Because had he not gotten into the end zone, they would have not accepted the penalty. Therefore, no two-point conversion. By forcing his way into the end zone, they have to take the penalty. They'll bring it back, but at least they get another shot, or they can decide to go just for the one for the field, for the extra point. That's right. Had he not made it, there would have been no option to we take. have a man in motion against the offense. We'll repeat the down. The man in motion was Harold Jasper, number 83. Burmeister, four of six for 58 yards on that touchdown drive. I don't mean to second guess the, the great experience and wisdom of Hayden Fry to go for two points here, but the distance, I think, demands that you bring in the extra point you didn't kick for one. They want to go for two. Burmeister, looking. Alan Cross has it. Like I said, why not go for two? <laughs> Great call by Hayden Fry. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a student of that man as he brings his team back. Iowa's on the board with 15 points. We are back at Kinnick Stadium, and this is number 32, Ryan Terry, as he takes a handoff. 
to give Iowa's second score of this afternoon. Five-yard touchdown run. Then Iowa decided to go for two. They were stopped because of a penalty. They come back, try it again, and Burmeister finds the big tight end, number 87. He's been doing it all day. Alan Cross with a two-point conversion, and the score, Iowa 15, and a long way to go still to catch up to Ohio State at 31. Yeah, but now when you're 16 points down, as you look at Butler Benote 33 and Robert Smith 26, when you're 16 points down, you can at least see some light at the end of the tunnel. It may be an oncoming train, but at least you can see it. Before, they were so far out of it, that score made a big difference. Bonote has a hole. Slips and falls at the 46 of Iowa. You're right, it was a locomotive at the other end of that tunnel. Yep, penalty flag down on the play, but let's go down and check out what Mark Jones has for us. Mark. All right, guys, I'm joined by Herb. Back, uh, Sweet Revenge, I guess, this game. Uh, you were the captain of the 1960 Ohio State team. Yeah, yeah that's right. We uh, we got beat on this same field by uh, just about the same score. So for my teammates in 60, this is sweet. Yeah, but it's it's a long way from over, guys. It's still 13 minutes. So. Is there an extra allowance in it for uh, the quarterback, your son? I, I didn't understand. Any extra allowance in it for your son after this? <laughs> no, I just like to see him stay safe and keep this, keep this winning margin because the game has gotten sloppy for us a little bit. All right. Offsides against Iowa on the kickoff is refused by Ohio State. A 44-yard return by Bonote. Raymond Harris pounding forward down to the 40 of Iowa. And Ohio State now needs to go back to the ground and keep the football away from Iowa. They can eat up maybe half of the time that's remaining, Lynn, if they can go on a good drive here. And they certainly can. They, and they've been doing it all afternoon, so it's not that they're deviating from their game plan at all. They'll just be able to drive the ball down the middle of the field, rely on their offensive line of Klein, Hartman, Winroll, Wall, Mono, Smith, Flush just to drive them off that line of scrimmage and let the running backs take advantage of it. William Houston in at fullback for Ohio State, number 42, along with Raymond Harris. Harris looking for a hole. Nowhere to go. Maybe a yard, and that is all. We want to apologize for the audio problem. The interview, in case you missed whom Mark Jones was speaking with, it is Kirk Herbstreet's father, Jim. Jim Herbstreet, who was the quarterback or captain of the 1960s. Ohio State football team. Well, it's going to be third down. He made a very interesting point about just wanting the team to move forward because we've been playing a little sloppy. And I don't know so much as that they've been playing sloppy as Iowa has just gotten a little enthusiasm back in their game and is gambling and, and winning on the gamble. Well, that's a good day for sloppy. Is it sloppy down there? Third and three. Raymond Harris trying to get around the corner. He cannot. The Hawkeye defense is rising to the occasion. Is it too little, too late? You see Wells, number 64, getting up. Olenzak, number 13, coming out of the pile. There were no less than nine black jerseys lined up within five yards of the line of scrimmage looking for run all the way. Look at 42, Hartley coming from behind. He's going to get in on the play. Everybody for the Hawkeyes trying to make it happen here in the fourth quarter. Timeout is called with 10 minutes and 38 seconds remaining. Now the clock is running. No, they have not called the timeout. And the play clock has run all the way down. The Ohio State team all the way over to the sidelines taking the penalty as the play clock ran all the way down. Now we'll move the ball back five yards, which will help Joel Kessel to some degree as he tries to put it out somewhere inside the 10 or 15 yard line. So the delay of game penalty moves it back to the 44. Harold Jasper is back for Iowa, standing at about his 10. Yes, 
Russell gets it away. He was bumped and a flag goes down. The ball goes into the end zone. Number five, Carlos James. Number eight, Thomas Knight. I'm not too sure, Lynn, I'm not that he sure. wasn't blocked were... into the kicker. That's the point I was going to make. It looked like someone was back there doing some blocking. We'll take a look at it right here. Now, if you're blocked into the punter, it is not a penalty. You see contact make right there. Oh, he calls it a number eight, Knight, and Knight was definitely blocked into the punter. Yeah, it was Jason Lewis who blocked him, and the uh, Iowa faithful don't like it at all. Carlos James came in front. He dove in front for the ball, missed the ball, missed the kicker completely, but Knight was definitely blocked into him. Well, now they move the ball back to the original line of scrimmage on fourth down prior to the intentional penalty at Ohio State not taking the intentional penalty. The two would have given them a first down. Just, just out of the reach of Carlos James. And the ball, a touchback. Raymond Harris almost downed it at the one, but they say no. We'll be back with 10.07 left. Burmeister. Burmeister running the football on first down and very close to a first down as he got it out across the 25. Well, actually, he gained about six. And right now he needs a towel because he slid the mud and his, his entire right arm seems to be covered with mud not to mention his leg and it is wet second down Burmeister lofting one downfield intercepted picked up by Ryan Cook and that may do it as Ohio State's Ryan Cook brings it back inside the Iowa 20 Cook a senior from Youngstown Ohio Ryan Cook Laying back in that coverage, he's a cornerback, but he's playing underneath in that five, underneath, two deep zone, and Paul has to get this up in the air and just kind of drop this in the zone. He gets it a little short as Brian Cook just drifted back and made the play. A long loping slot stride on Cook as he's driven out of bounds by Ryan Carey. So Ohio State picks up their 13th interception of the year. Their defense has really done a good job this season. Raymond Harris banging straight ahead. Getting it inside the 20. The clock running with 9-12 remaining in the game. I would not be totally surprised if Kirk Kirkstreet doesn't throw another pass this afternoon. The rain's coming down, it's cold, they've got a lead, you want to protect it. The ball is going to be slippery, harder to handle. He's only attempted one pass in the second half. He completed that one. One for one. They haven't had to throw. They want to run that clock. Raymond Harris caught in the backfield by number 91, Brett Bielema. Bielema, a senior from Prophetstown, Illinois, in there very quickly from his nose guard position. And he, this is what happens when you don't throw the football. You, the defense realizes it, and so they say, okay, we're just going to get people up to play the run. So they've got a lot of bodies up there at the line of scrimmage, and Brett Bielema makes the play inside. Moves the ball back to the 24, where it's going to be third and about 12. Well, we haven't really called state lines name very much, Brian. Number 88, the top receiver. This might be a time he would go to him. Herb Street hits him. Good call by Lynn Swan. Yeah, I, I played this game. I, I, <laughs> every once in a while, I know what might happen. Well, you like those guys with those 80s, too, there, you know, the numbers yeah. on their back. Well, it was man on man coverage, but uh, Kyle Davis is playing back. Actually, he wheels around. You should never turn your back to the receiver that way. Just a simple slant pattern to the inside, but he. he close to that first down marker. State line, quite an athlete. Got a great vertical jump. He's got great speed, good hands. Just hasn't had to 
be called upon that much. They're measuring as it's fourth down and inches. The ball about at the Iowa 11. 7.36 left in the game. Ohio State leading Iowa 31 to 15. Ooh, Herb Street coming up a little short, measuring that pass to Stave Line or Stave Line coming up a little short and not maintaining his footing. The one saving grace as far as the weather is concerned from the standpoint of this downpour that we've had is that it isn't a bit colder because this would produce about a half a ton of snow. <laughs> <laughs> it would be well, even tougher conditions. I'm looking at it as this rain is coming down. It's not coming straight down. It's kind of floating, being pushed this way and that way. A couple of degrees drop and it definitely would be snow. Well, the night is not over yet, Mr. Swan. We may, Halloween. See, we may see a little uh, trick-or-treat whiteness before the night is over. Fourth and inches. Cotron appears to have the first down as he gets to about the 10. Let's go get an update from John Saunders. Toronto and Nebraska, Tommy Frazier, five yards in this touchdown pass, which one way goes the other. I'm just going to run it in, but he hits Gerald Armstrong for the touchdown, 31-7. Thank you, John. Nebraska winning that Big 8 battle so far in a big way. Colorado, four turnovers. Uh, you can't expect to be in a, a tough ball game and turn the ball over four times and, and come away a winner. Not against a team such as Nebraska, certainly. It is first and 10, just outside the 10. Theoretically, Ohio State could get a first down short of the goal line. Raymond Harris banging down to about the three as he spins and stays on his feet. And Ohio State continues to pound it out on the ground. Raymond Harris is the ideal guy to have in this ball game at this moment because he's got the good inside running ability. You, you, you explore the little weakness there. If you get your offensive line to get the good surge, you don't have to worry about him getting caught on the sideline, being pushed out of bounds to stop the clock. Perfect. He is a hard-running dude also. He's bigger than you might think, too, at 225 pounds. He's out of Lorraine, Ohio. Other folks coming in for this game from small towns in Ohio. and Yeah, some of those guys from Ohio play Iowa. for Iowa. I'll tell you an interesting story I heard coming over to the game. Houston! The fullback at 260 pounds, just short of the goal line. Is that Houston, the player, or Houston, <laughs> the city? <laughs> this so happens big to be man. William Houston, and he's from Trotwood, Ohio, another huge metropolis. Trotwood may be about the same size as William. <laughs> <laughs> he is a load, man. He's down there to the one. Yeah. Houston getting ready to... Probably try and push this one in for a touchdown. He's in there at fullback with Harris behind him. And it is William Houston for the touchdown. Now nothing fancy about it. Ohio State has been racking up yards on the ground all afternoon into this early evening. And with the exception of Corey Stringer, who started at right tackle, uh, the offensive line for Ohio State has stayed intact and, and behind Klein and company, just driven the Hawkeyes from that line of scrimmage. Tim Williams on to attempt yet another extra point with 5-12 remaining in the game. Ohio State drives it in again, and this time, for the first time this season, there, but there is a penalty flag down. Scott Plate, number six, came in attempting to block the extra point and took the legs from underneath Tim Williams. And I'm sure that's going to be assessed on the kickoff. Which There's means Scott Plate. Which means it could be a a, a pooch kit. <laughs> now the yeah. kickoff into the end zone. true. <laughs> Would make it an awful short kick. Yeah, roughing the kicker. Good defense. 
15 yards, but it'll only go half the distance. We'll re-kick. Well, they what's won't the, assess it on the kickoff. What's, what's, the, what's the extra kick point back? The extra kick was no good, so okay, Ohio State's going to take it again. Here it is again. Okay. You see right there, he just takes his leg from out from underneath him. I thought the kick went through good. Well, Williams remains perfect. The one he missed, he gets to do it again, and he has not missed an extra point this year. 38-15, Ohio State. Ohio State has to go just 21 yards, but they eat up four minutes and 12 seconds in the scoring drive that gives them a 38-15 lead. They ran seven plays, and their time of possession now more than 10 minutes greater than that of Iowa. Tim Williams to kick it off. Harold Jasper and Willie Guy are back deep for Iowa. 5-12 remaining in the game. Willie Guy to the right, Jasper to the left. And then a punch kick sliding along. Guy picks it up at about the 13. Trying to get outside, hauled down from behind by Brad Pope. Number 41, a senior from Westerville, Ohio. Let's go back and look at the touchdown by Big William Houston. And Houston, and the eruption of an oil well, he just drives through using all that weight and momentum. And he's in for the score. Had to lean on them a little bit. That's it. Well, when you're 260, you can do some serious leaning. Iowa trailing big. Five minutes remaining. They have it at their own 26. Paul Burmeister back in at quarterback. Sets up the screenplay and completes it to Kane. Cliff Kane trips up. Tovar of the 25. Steve Tovar, man who got a little middle linebacker. Iowa will go without the huddle, trying to get as much accomplished in as short a period of time as possible. Burmeister calling it from the line of scrimmage. And it completes it to Alan Cross, the tight end. And Cross has enough for a first down as he gets to the 29. Knocked down by Alex Rodriguez, number 48, and Tom Lee's 81. No, he's not enough for the first down. I'm a few yards off. He needs to get across the 35. 3rd down. Good protection. Burmeister has it tipped. I believe Steve Tovar might have gotten a hand on it. He's had a strong second half as the Ohio State defense has dominated. Well, it's fourth and six. They're on their own in their own territory. I do not think this is a time to take a gamble and risk. If they don't get it, they turn the ball right back over in their own territory to Ohio State. But they're going for it on fourth down. Burmeister firing it long and completing it. Jeff Antela with a reception for a first down at the Iowa 48. Lorenzo Stiles, the linebacker number 90, made the tackle. Well, the success they've been having, you know, with the longer two-point conversion they completed, going for it fourth down in their own territory. Obviously, they have to go for it if they want to win. You see the hit on Burmeister, but I'm amazed that they've have, they're having this kind of success. They should have been gambling like this all day. It's a 19-yard gain. Burmeister on first down, in and out of the hands of Allen Cross at the Ohio State 40. That stops the clock with 3.42 remaining. And the rain is just coming down like crazy now. Very few fans remain here at Kinnick Stadium. And those that do, we ought to give them the Fleur de Lis or something. Purple hearts, I don't know. Yeah, purple hearts, everything else is probably purple, it's so cold. Burmeister incomplete. Coming across and getting a hand on it was Walter Taylor, number two as Burmeister had a couple of receivers down there, including Ryan Terry, who sprints back. 3.36 remaining in the game, and it's now third and ten. He was, Ryan Terry was downfield, almost got the Kareem off the, uh, Carib off the, uh, pass, and it was tipped up. 
Burmeister's done a pretty good job. 7 of 13 for 80 yards passing so far. And he's under pressure right now. Trying to stop and throw. And it's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Brad Pope, number 41, was right in his face. Chasing him all the way to the sideline. Paul Burmeister barely had enough time to get his body turned in. That Ford Ferguson, tough old right-handed guy, moved to move to the left, then turn and throw like that on the right. And there's a penalty flag down. It would appear to be against Ohio State. It's Jerry Hendrickson. Offside, defense, next down is three. That'll move the ball to the Ohio State 46. And it will bring up third and about five. A nasty night here in Iowa. And it's been a long, tough game for the Hawkeyes on Parents' Day. As the Ohio State Buckeyes came in here and have dominated. Burmeister gets it away and completes it to King. Cliff King can run. He has a blocker and is down inside the 10. Willie Guy, number one, was a receiver downfield blocking. King was running up. Trying to make the play. Trying to get into the end zone. A big gain of 39 yards. Timeout called with 320 remaining in the game. We'll be back. Stay with us. Next Saturday here on ABC, it's another big day of regional action. Washington and Arizona in the Pac-10. Alabama, LSU in the Southeast. Texas A&M will take on Louisville. The Aggies undefeated. San Diego State and Marshall Falk against Wyoming. And Wisconsin and Michigan State here in the Big Ten. And that next Saturday. And that Washington-Arizona game is going to be a good comparison game as Arizona gave Miami fits earlier this year. That's right. Miami barely beating the Wildcats. Burmeister just shrugging off defenders, firing in the end zone incomplete. The pass intended for Hornaday, and now a flag comes. Mike Hornaday, the wide receiver, number 36, screaming for pass interference. Finally, a flag is thrown as he was driven out of bounds. Now they're going to pick it up. They say the pass was too tall, and he would not have been able to get it. It's not a catchable ball. Here's Hornaday, 36, coming across. And... And the ball's thrown in the air. Hornaday well, is saying he was hit before. Uh, he was hit before. Now, that pass may have been too high for Hornaday, but there are some people who could get up and make that catch. Yeah, I, yeah I'm standing next to one of them right here. <laughs> <laughs> and as Dan Hughes is on the field, he could have done it. Crazy thing about those kind of plays, when you get forced to one sideline, usually way across the other side, there's someone who's open. That's right. And Willie can... Guy, number one, was. So you can just see him. Second down, Burmeister into the end zone for Willie Guy, but again, overthrown. Burmeister was nailed. That's the second shot he's taken. That may have had something to do with that ball being a little bit high. The no. quarterback steps in the place in the pocket, and he's trying to fire one in. If he can't follow through and he gets caught and has to release it high, that ball will sail on him. Jason Simmons, 91, was all over Burmeister. But Burmeister has shown some presence. 3.06 remaining in the game. It is third and goal from the seven. Burmeister doesn't seem to have a great foot speed, so I don't, I don't look for him to roll out much. Cliff King on a delay gets maybe a yard, and that is all. He runs it to the middle of the field. Marlon Kerner, 46, and Greg Smith, 57, stop him. Timeout on the field with 2.55 remaining. We'll be back to Iowa City in just a minute. Here's what happened in the Big Ten today. Michigan coming from behind after trailing by 10 at halftime to beat Purdue and remain unbeaten. Penn State traveling out to Provo, Utah and taking it from BYU 30-17. And the Big Ten... Still in a quandary as far as second place is concerned, but Ohio State making their statement today, leading 38-15 late. Iowa. Allen Cross out of bounds at the two. On fourth down and goal. 
Alan Cross couldn't quite get into the end zone. Alex Rodriguez, number 48, I believe, was a man in on the stop. Came up, make the big hit. It's tough, even for a tight end with Alan Cross's size, when you're moving across the field, and that linebacker's got position on you, you make the catch because you're concentrating on the ball. The momentum is taking you towards the sideline, and that linebacker just drives you. He doesn't have enough weight to just be able to lean up against him to score. Well, a touchdown by Iowa there would have only been really a psychological difference in the ball game as Ohio State leads 38-15. But the Buckeyes take over on downs at their own one. Bob Hoying is into the game at quarterback number 14, a freshman from St. Henry, Ohio. And penalty flags fly prior to the snap. New quarterback in. A new rhythm in the snap count. Could very well be confusion for Ohio State. Dead ball, 60, oh, what? Defense making contact. And it's a problem for the Iowa unit having another person call them. They jump off on that particular play. And as we mentioned earlier, if you do that as a defensive player and you do not make contact and get back on side before the ball is snapped, there is no penalty for that time. They bump. So they move it out to the six, where it'll be first and five, Ohio State. Now one of the Ohio State players, the left guard, appeared to move prematurely. So that new quarterback causing problems on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Dead ball. Procedure. Offense. First down. Well, we may never get this playoff. <laughs> They're going to move it back again. There's what Hoying has done this year, 8 of 14. They keep doing this just drive could take up more time and <laughs> have the same amount of time. This a non-drive. It'd be a non-drive. A non-drive. It'd be half, a yo-yo. Half the distance to the goal. So it's first about seven and a half. Houston, the big fullback, pounding forward. Now let's go back down once again to a guy who's really had tough duty today. I'm telling you, Mark, we feel for you, pal. Mark Jones on the sideline. Oh! In the true spirit of Halloween, I had to ask a couple of uh, politically correct questions. Uh, George, tell me, were you aware that Ohio State was going to take Iowa hostage? Were you in the loop? No, I wasn't, but you can kind of blame it on that. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. Bill, tell me, this game was really a test of true character, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ross, uh, I guess... All ears. How appropriate that when he's talking to all ears Ross Perot, we couldn't hear him. Option play goes nowhere. Stuffed inside the five. Maybe that's a statement as to the content of what that Ross Perot was saying on the field. <laughs> well, tomorrow, big day of sports here on ABC, beginning live at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, or rather uh, Central time. World-class road racers and 25,000 runners will be going at it through the city streets of New York. The New York City Marathon live, and then at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific, the legendary Jack Nicklaus will showcase America's toughest 18 holes of golf presented by Nationwide Insurance. Followed by the final round of golf's richest event, the Tour Championship, all tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Busting through is Eddie George, who's the backup fullback, and Eddie George may have enough for a first down. He does. And that marathon, they're laying the carpet on those bridges for all those runners to go across and make it a little bit easier for them. Yeah, that gets good. They have a little known fact. You know, they have, there are about three or four bridges they run over. Yeah. They lay down the carpet for one bridge tonight for Sunday's race, but the other three bridges, they actually lay this carpet down like just an hour or so before the race. You mean it's the same carpet? They move it from bridge to bridge? No, it's not the same one. It's a different one, but can you imagine if they have a problem? <laughs> they can't get the carpet down. Yeah. They're going to run over the carpet layers. I guess so. They're not going to stop, I'll tell you that. Eddie George again, carrying the ball outside the 15, picking up two or three. Time's running out. i got to tell you the small-town story I heard 
at a little muffin shop before I came out here. One guy walks up, he looks at the woman by the counter and sees her name tag and she's from West Liberty, Iowa. He says, I'm from West Liberty, Ohio. And he says, how big is your town? She goes, one block. <laughs> he said, mine's three. She said, how many lights do you have? He said, three. How many do you have? She goes, oh, we don't have any. We just have one that flashes on and off. <laughs> A lot of small towns represented here at this football game. That is correct. And time runs down as the final second ticks off. John Cooper and the Ohio State Buckeyes, a big winner here, 38 to 15 over Iowa. Will it be enough to help deflect some of the pressure John Cooper has felt from the fans and media in Columbus? He and Hayden Fry meet on the field, and Hayden Fry's misery continues on what is an appropriately miserable day. His season has been a disaster as Iowa loses again. Let's go down now in the field to Mark Jones with winning head coach, Buckeye head man, John Cooper.